The name of the book, Let Your Heart Break, Be Your Guide, Lessons in Engaged Contemplation. The first part of the title comes from one of the stories in the book. And the story is this, that after giving a talk in London a few years ago at this beautiful center for peace and reconciliation, and a young woman approached me uh, to have a conversation. And she came with some serious vocational questions, questions that young people often ask. What am I going to do with my life? I feel lost, unhappy. I would like to do something meaningful in this world that seems to be falling apart. And as I sat with her and, and listened, I didn't feel that I had anything. <laughs> but I remember the advice that I actually got early on from, from Angie Harvey who said, people might be telling you to do what gives you, you know, joy or happiness. And he said, you know, don't follow your bliss. And he, I'm sure, was referring to like the famous bumper stickers, follow your bliss. <laughs> don't follow your bliss. Look where that has gotten us to. Follow your heartbreak. Let your heartbreak be your guide. And so that's what I said to her. And then I forgot about that conversation. I remember almost actually missing it flight back to New York because we talked for so long but I forgot about that conversation until a few months later where she emailed me and told me what happened. She said that she sat with that question what breaks your heart for a long time and that that produced quite a bit of frustration for her and then one day in her process she turned on the TV and so all these Syrian refugees arriving on the island of uh, Lesbos. Uh, that was the time. And something, just when she saw those images of children, women and men, she just felt completely shattered. Without telling anyone, she booked a ticket and went there and just joined the efforts, picking people up from, from the Mediterranean Sea. And she said that being there and witnessing that completely devastated her, but it also put her in touch with joy. Not the kind of joy that can stand anything difficult, but the kind of joy that survives even when your heart is breaking because you're in touch with so much pain, so much suffering. That's the title of the book. And, and in the book, the reflections that I offer there include stories, some scriptural interpretations, uh, some practices about how to follow our heartbreaks, you know, in a world where, I mean, look at all the uh, shootings that are happening, look at all the systemic racism, look at the ecological devastation and people wanting to spend more money on military and weapons and, you know, all the nonsense. It's hard to walk out of the house in the morning and, and not feel shattered when we look around. And so this book is really a response to that, how to live with that in a way where we can be invited to understand that every time we feel that, we are actually in touch with a bigger heartbreak, with the heartbreak of God. And that our wounds are sacred wounds that are held with so much love by the divine. And that we need to respond to that. In terms of the heart itself, the heart is the center, our spiritual center. That place deep within where there is you know, a sacred chapel there and an altar. And that's where we go to connect with the divine. It's that place in us where our body, our mind, our thoughts everything can kind of come together there in a beautiful way. We can become a mirror of the divine light where we can reflect that into the world. If we do our work, our inner work of spiritual practice, even though in the Christian tradition contemplation is not something we accomplish, it's a gift. But the work that we need to do is the 
work of preparing ourselves so when that presence is available to us we can actually receive it so we won't miss it